Hi, welcome to this demo. My name is Anuraj. I am an engineering technologist with Dell. In this demo, we are going to deploy and configure Dell CSM Authorization Module 2.0. The CSM Authorization 2.0 is released with the CSM version 1.11. And currently, the CSM Authorization Module 2.0 is in tech preview. CSM Authorization Module provides the ability to configure quotas to limit the storage consumption by a Kubernetes cluster. It also allows to configure the access control policies to control the access to a storage array by the Kubernetes cluster. Also allows to shield the storage credentials from the Kubernetes administrators, so ensuring the credentials are only handled by the storage administrators. CSM Authorization 2.0 is redesigned with a stateless architecture. That means the CSM authorization module don't need any persistent storage to keep the state inside the CSM authorization. Instead, the CSM authorization module will rely on the storage array to keep the state. Also, the CSM authorization module 2.0 introduces the declarative configuration management by using the CRD. So for that purpose, the CSM authorization module 2.0 introduces three different CRDs, storage, CSM tenant and CSM role. This provides the ability to manage the CSM authorization module using the continuous deployment methods like GitOps. And the CSM authorization module 2.0 also introduces the ability to integrate the authorization module with a wall server to keep the storage array credential, thereby improving the security of the entire solution. Let us review our deployment architecture. So we have a PowerFlex storage array with multiple pools configured inside that. And we are planning to integrate two OpenShift cluster OCP01 and OCP02 with the PowerFlex storage array. We'll be deploying the CSM authorization server onto the OCP01 OpenShift cluster. As the CSM authorization server needs a wall server to keep the storage credential, we'll be deploying a HashiCorp wall server also onto the OCP01 cluster. Also, we can review the CSM authorization configurations which we are going to implement. So we'll create a storage resource to represent our PowerFlex storage array. Then we'll create two different CSM tenant resources, one to represent our OCP01 OpenShift cluster and the other one to represent the OCP02 OpenShift cluster. Next, we'll create a CSM role which will allow the consumption of 16 GB storage from the storage pool SP01 from our PowerFlex storage array. Then we'll bind this role with the tenant OCP01 and OCP02, thereby allowing both of these OpenShift clusters to consume 16 GB each from the storage pool SP01 from our PowerFlex storage array. As we already mentioned, we have storage pool SP02 also configured on the PowerFlex and we'll not be allowing any of the OpenShift cluster to consume storage from the storage pool SP02 from our PowerFlex storage array. Now, Let's proceed with the configuration. So this is our OpenShift cluster OCP01. Initially, we'll deploy the HashiCorp wall server onto the OpenShift cluster OCP01. And we'll be deploying the wall server onto a new project called Vault. So let's create the project OC new project Vault. And to enable the TLS on the wall server, we need to have a server certificate and key. So I already generated the required certificate and key file from the enterprise CA. Now, let's create the secret with the wall certificate files. We'll be installing the wall server using the Helm chart. So let's review the value override file. Now we can proceed with the installation. Let's verify the status of the vault ports. Now we can see all the ports are running. Let's go ahead and initialize the wall server. Now the wall server is successfully initialized. Let's take the unseal key and the root token as an environment variable to be used in the future comments. Let's unseal the vault 0 server and we can join the vault 1 into the cluster. Then we can go ahead and unseal the vault-1. hyphen Next we can join the vault 2 also to the cluster. Then we can unseal the vault 2 server also. Now we can log into the vault server using the cluster root token and we can verify the cluster members. We can see all the three wall servers are part of the cluster now. Let's start configuring the wall server for the CSM authorization module. Now we can enable the KV secret engine at the path CSM-authorization. 
CSM authorization is running in the OpenShift cluster. So the CSM authorization will be using the service account, specifically the service account of the storage service to authenticate with the wall server. So let's go ahead and enable the Kubernetes authentication in the wall server. Now the Kubernetes authentication in the wall server is successfully enabled. Now we can go ahead and configure the Kubernetes authentication such so that the wall server will be able to verify the service second token from the Kubernetes API server. So we need to configure the Kubernetes API server endpoint into the wall server. Next, we will configure a policy inside the wall server by the name of CSM hyphen authorization, which will enable the read capabilities at the path CSM hyphen authorization. Now we can configure a role such that this policy will be bound to the storage service service account of the authorization module. Next, we will create the secret inside the wall server. So let's get the URL of the wall server using the OCGET route. Now go to the wall server URL. I already created the secret for this perfect storage array inside this wall server. So let's go to the path CSM hyphen authorization and we can see the storage array credential is already created here. Now we have completed all the required wall server configuration for the CSM authorization module. Now let's proceed with the deployment of the CSM authorization module onto our OpenShift cluster. So we'll be deploying the authorization module onto a new namespace called authorization. So let's create a new project called authorization using the OC new project command. Create the JWT signing secret into the authorization namespace. Next, we can review the CSM authorization manifest file. Here, we can review the vault integration configuration, the vault address, the vault role, and the KV engine path. Next, we can apply this manifest file to create the authorization module. Let's verify the authorization pod status. Now we can see all the pods are in running state. So let's get the vault server endpoint by using the command OCGET route. Before proceeding with the CSM authorization module configuration, let's review our PowerFlex storage. This is our PowerFlex storage console. Let's go to block and we can see the storage pools here. So there is two storage pool created, SP01 and SP02. We'll be configuring the authorization module to allow the OCP01 and OCP02 cluster to consume storage only from the storage pool SP01. Now we can configure the storage custom resource inside the CSM authorization module to represent the PowerFlex storage. So let's review the YAML file for creating the storage custom resource inside the CSM authorization module. Here we are providing all the PowerFlex storage configuration. Also we are providing the credential path in the HashiCorp vault server. So the authorization module can retrieve the credential of this PowerFlex storage from the vault server. Apply this YAML file to create the storage resource inside the CSM authorization module. Next, we can create the CSM role. So let's review the YAML file for creating the CSM role. In this role, we are configuring a quota of 16 GB to be consumed from the storage pool SP01 in our PowerFlex storage. So let's apply this YAML file to create this role. We'll be creating one more role. In that, we'll be allowing the quota of 16 GB to be consumed from the storage pool SP02 from our PowerFlex storage. So let's apply this YAML file to create our role. Both of our CSM roles are successfully created. Now we can proceed with the configuration of tenant. So let's review the YAML file for creating the OCP01 tenant. So in this tenant, we can see that we are binding the role PO04-SP01 so that the OCP01 cluster can consume 16 GB of storage from the SP01 in our PowerFlex storage. Let's apply this YAML file to create the OCP01 tenant using the del ctl command create an admin token from the csm authorization module provide the jwt signing secret created initially again using the del ctl command generate a tenant token for the ocp01 tenant we have completed all the required configuration of the csm authorization server now we can proceed with integrating the ocp01 cluster with the powerflex storage array for that we'll be deploying the csm powerflex create a new project powerflex and apply the tenant token into this namespace. Now review the authorization sidecar configuration and create the authorization sidecar configuration as a secret into the PowerFlex namespace. Next, create a secret with the proxy root server certificate into the PowerFlex namespace. Next, create the 
PowerFlex storage config secret into the PowerFlex namespace. Now let's review the manifest file for creating the PowerFlex CSM. Here we can see the authorization module is enabled and we have configured the authorization server URL here. Now let's apply this YAML file to create the PowerFlex CSM. Now we can see all the PowerFlex CSM ports are running successfully. Next we will create a storage class. So let's review the YAML file for creating the storage class. Here we can see the storage class will be provisioning PVs from the storage pool SP01. Let's apply this YAML file to create the storage class. Now the storage class is successfully created. Now we can create a deployment to consume storage from our PowerFlex storage. So let's review the YAML file for deploying the deployment. Here we can see we are using the storage class PF04-SP01 and the storage size as 8GB. This will be provisioning a PV of 8GB from the storage pool SP01 in our PowerFlex storage. So let's apply this YAML file to create the deployment and the PVC. So let's verify the pod status. Now we can see the pod is in running state. Also verify the PVC. We can see the PVC is also in bound state. Let's go to the storage. Go to the block volumes. Here we can see our volume is successfully provisioned and mapped to the host. We will configure one more deployment. So let's review the YAML file for the deployment. Here we are configuring a PVC of size 16 GB. So this is going to be violating our quota allocated for the OCP01 tenant. So let's apply this YAML file. And now we can see the PVC is in pending state. Let's try to describe the PVC. Here we can see that the CSM authorization module has rejected the request for provisioning a volume of 16 GB because it's exceeding the quota size. Next, we will create one more storage class to provision PVCs from the storage pool SP02. So we will create a new deployment and in this deployment, we will provision the PVC from the storage class PF04-SP02. So let's apply this YAML file to create the deployment and the PVC. Now we can see the PVC is in pending state. Let's try to describe this PVC. So here also we can see that the authorization module has rejected the request to provision PVC from the SP02 as the SP02 permission to the OCP01 tenant is not provided in the CSM authorization module. Now we can configure our OCP02 cluster as a new tenant into the CSM authorization module. So let's review the YAML file for creating the OCP02 tenant and let's apply this YAML file to create the OCP02 tenant. Next, use the del ctl command to generate the OCP02 tenant token. Now go to the OCP02 cluster. So this is our OCP02 cluster. So let's create a new project PowerFlex to deploy the CSM PowerFlex into this OCP02 cluster. Let's apply the OCP02 tenant token into the PowerFlex namespace. Next, create the authorization sidecar configuration secret into the PowerFlex namespace. Also create the proxy root certificate secret also into the PowerFlex namespace. Also create the PowerFlex array config secret into the PowerFlex namespace. Now we can create the CSM PowerFlex. Let's review the manifest file for creating the CSM PowerFlex. Here we can see the authorization module is enabled and the CSM server endpoint is provided here. Now let's apply the CSM YAML file to create the PowerFlex CSM in the OCP02 cluster. Let's verify the pod status and we can see these PowerFlex CSM ports are running successfully. Now we can create the storage class. So let's review the YAML file for creating the storage class. So this storage class will provision the PVCs from the SP01. Let's apply this YAML file to create the storage class. Now we can create a test deployment. So let's review the YAML file for the test deployment. This is creating a PVC from the storage class PF04-SP01 and the size is 8GB. So let's apply this YAML file for creating the deployment and the persistent volume. Let's review the persistent volume status and we can see the persistent volume is successfully created and the pod is in running state. So we'll create one more deployment. So in this deployment, we'll be provisioning a persistent volume claim of 16 GB size, which will be violating the quota allocated for the tenant OCP02. So let's apply this YAML file to create the deployment and the PVC. Let's review the status of the PVC. Now we can see the PVC is in pending state. 
Let's describe this PVC. We can see here the CSM authorization module has rejected the PVC provisioning request as this PVC is violating the quota limit. This concludes this demo. Thank you for watching.